Good morning everyone, so today I am armed with a list. I've had a little bit of a workout. These cows that are on the right here, these are cull cows, they're going tomorrow. And the ones that are on the left, those are empty two and three year olds. So what's happening this morning is we are gonna pull all those empties out of this young herd, put them in with the older herd. That means when the five cows go to the works tomorrow, we will be down from 20 rows to 19, which will save a little bit of time. Coming in, we've got our first one, which is the one behind this broken coloured one. Come on in. Ah, 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 ah. Come on. Up you go. Here's one of the cull cows. We'll take this collar off her today. Number two, take that one. And there's one more here, number 254. She's just aborted yesterday. Dad's picked her up, so I'll take her as well. Come on, girl. Currently in my last row I am milking six cows so I can take another ten. There's nine up on the, the board there except that one that aborted which will make it ten so it's, it's full now. Next herd's in and all those empties have boxed up. There's one of my cow cows, she's just had like a really high somatic cell count. I think on the last herd test it was seven million and the one before that is about five million and, and a couple of the others have been really high as well. So. She's just got to get out of here. And the other two that I'm going to mark too, I think they're the same. They've just got really high cell counts and it's not a one-off. They have had them for a little while. It's good getting that done. It means pretty much all the culls and all the empties are just in this herd here. So I don't think I really want to cull much more that's in the two and three year olds. They're looking pretty good how they are. But in here we'll have or we'll pull out quite a few I guess. I've still got to send about, probably about another 35 culls plus those empties away. So a lot of these cows will go. I might try and offload a few more next week too. But I'll try and keep the empties until the end of the season. They generally milk pretty well so there's not much point sort of getting rid of them. Plus all the young ones I'm gonna to sell to Steve again. He said he will take them. There's about 20 that I think will be all right for him. Busy, busy this morning. I've just filled the sprayer up for Dad. He's gonna go out and spray a paddock, which is straight through there, paddock number five. I wanted him to do it this morning, but he got a little bit mixed up and sprayed this paddock out instead, which is fine. It doesn't really matter. It was sort of my plan to do that one as well. I wasn't quite sure if I was going to or not, but I guess I've got to do it now because it should start to brown off in about a, well, sort of five to seven days. Ted's come to give the hedges their annual haircut. It takes them about a day and a half to go around the whole farm. We have probably taken quite a lot of hedges out in the last sort of five years. 
There used to be one over there, or above the hedge over there, that ran sort of through that paddock. And we took that out, we've taken the ones out down there, I made a bit of a video on it a while and back, it was probably two years ago I think. And we are sort of planning to, to take little bits out here and there, like this one I want to take this out at some point, it's only a short hedge, I want to get power up there, it'd make things so much easier. It is an annual expense or an annual cost that we have to get him in to do it. Probably used to take him two days and now it only takes a day and a half so we have sort of, I guess, cut back by about a quarter. Quick trip to the airport to drop these guys off. Mum and Dad are off biking with Mike the Builder and Ingrid. A little bit of a passing shower that came through. Has been today although it wasn't forecast. The airport's pretty much like straight through there. We're pretty lucky it's only 20 minutes away so it's pretty close by and we're pretty much at the end of the runway because when I fly my drone around I'm restricted I'm only allowed to go 120 well, I can't go 120 meters up there because I get into the end of the runway and yeah I don't really want to hit a plane that's flying over. Ted's just over there he's finished this sort of section in here and then it usually gets started over there but I need to put the cows on the chicory soon so what he's going to do is come and start on this section down here. Finch has came and roller drilled this yesterday so it's tidied this paddock up. I was planning today to chuck the roller on one of the tractors and then bring it over and just go over it again. I'm not sure if they double rolled this or not. It's all got to help though and some of the permanent paddocks that I direct drilled down the back there I was going to sort of go over them as well. It sort of certainly can't hurt them. These annual will be alright, I'm not too worried about them. It's just the, the permanent ones would be quite nice to get, get a roll on them. They're still pretty soft and crumbly. We'll definitely firm it up. Run out of time today really, I just didn't get a chance. I've been sort of doing little jobs here and there. I might try tomorrow. It's probably going to take a while to do sort of four and a half, five hectares with a three meter or 2.8 meter roller I think, but we'll see what tomorrow looks like. Truck's just driven down the road there now. So these girls can wander down now. It's a little bit behind this morning. Paul's just giving me a hand while Dad's away, so he's following the cows down and he's going to set the gates up. These can just go straight into the yard on the truck. Easy as, and five less to milk tomorrow. absolutely cracking day. There's a little bit of a breeze which is nice but I have rolled this paddock it didn't take me too long it's looking pretty good. I think you can sort of see the roller lines in there it's looking fairly smooth now. Probably about halfway through this one and then there's just the one over there to do. This roller's not doing too bad of a job you can sort of notice the difference if I stand here from what I need to do to where I've been. Probably wouldn't hurt to have a little bit more weight on this like we have thought about sort of making a bit of a box that can sit up top where you can put sort of concrete posts or strainers to put a little bit more weight and pressure down on it. A few feathers there which is from a pigeon there was about probably 15 or 20 of them over here they were probably eating the, the maize seeds that are still sort of left there from the cobs or maybe a little bit of grass seed I'm not sure if they eat it so I brought the shotgun over and I got about five of them which yeah pigeon's a bit of a pest so that's good made a little bit of a decrease in their population although there's still quite a few flying around does look pretty dry at the moment and it is right there's a bit of moisture in the soil but a little bit of rain certainly wouldn't hurt at the moment i think there's some coming in about three or four days time which will be absolutely perfect just finished the last one this paddock was probably the most powdery but it's come up really well i think a lot better from rolling it jeepers doesn't that hedge look good now but getting back to this paddock which dad sprayed, drawing a little map here. So this is the cropping plan for next summer. So these paddocks that are highlighted yellow, these are going to be the chicory paddocks, although I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do chicory yet. I might possibly think about doing turnips, but I'm a little bit unsure. Probably will go chicory, but just weighing up a few options. So I'm going to keep that paddock, which is in chicory at the moment. So that'll go into an annual and then back again next summer and then these two are new paddocks so there is actually chicory in that one too but that'll go into a new grass, a permanent but I've earmarked that one and that one they're just like poor performers really they need they need something, there's a heap of summer grass 
Then all these orange ones are maize paddocks. So at the moment, or this year, that paddock was in maize, that paddock in maize. So we're going to keep those two in. And then over here, these two, they're pretty poor performers too. So they need to go. And this paddock that Dad just broke is number four right here where my finger is. Also thinking about doing this little block in here. That's not certain but that comes out to about 8.2 hectares which is about right I think where the cows are over there that's potentially the one I was going to do and it has been in maize before and there's quite a new grass in there at the moment it's probably only about three years old but it's just so handy putting that in maize like it's so handy to the pit and it's a nice sort of square paddock there's no trees in there so yeah just ease but the reason I've sprayed out this paddock because I'm sort of trying something new this year and normally what I would usually do is just leave this paddock how it is, leave it in grass and then come spray it out in the spring and then put maize in it after that. But this paddock is such a bad performer, especially through here, like there's not much grass growing. You can sort of see the clumps of good grass, it's sort of the real greeny patches and then you just get these bare patches which sort of just grow summer grass. It's all along that sort of little ridge there. Ideally you want like, the whole paddock looking like that but this is just the prime example so it's not too bad there and then you just get these big patches where there's pretty much nothing growing whatsoever and I was talking with Darcy the other day saying that I was thinking about drilling it in an annual or just stitching in an annual into here so then I get a little bit of growth through the winter which I did last year I tried it with that winter star and a couple of the maize paddocks over there that I rolled today and to be honest they didn't really work well work as well as I had of wished and he was saying the best thing to do is just spray it out in the autumn you kill all the weeds you knock it right back you go in with an annual so instead of drilling like that 15 to 18 kilos you're going in at 30 you get a real good growth rates because it's like a whole crop of annual instead of perennial grass being in with it as well and he said the earliest well the earlier you can get it in say like at the end of March the more growth you're going to get or the more grazing's off through winter and that's possibly where I went wrong last year because we had that real hard drought I sort of put it in a little bit late and then it didn't get rain till you know later on again so it sort of only got the one or two grazings off it which wasn't ideal but I'm hoping that we'll get this drilled next week and it should turn out to be quite a good crop I've also done that paddock up there that dad well sprayed out by accident I was sort of tossing up whether to do it anyway so it doesn't really matter it's actually probably good that he did but it just means we've got to take two paddocks out now or we can't graze them with the cows so potentially I might think about sending some more cows off to the works next week we are sort of stocked at like three cows to the hectare maybe 2.8 so I could just get rid of sort of six to eight cows which would sort of adjust to, to these areas being taken out which wouldn't be too bad anyway because I've got to get rid of cows at some point this other paddock here, I'm not spraying it out. I think there's enough grass in here to sort of warrant keeping it in. Like there are patches just in front here where you can see it's just all that real summery grass. But it's actually not too bad in the scheme of things. So I'm going to leave this one. It can just get strip sprayed and then direct drilled later on. I guess the cheaper option though is to not drill them at all. It's just leave them in grass. But I think I'm going to benefit enough by getting that extra growth through the winter to allow it. Plus, it's just going to knock all those weeds going forward as well. So they get sort of three hits around up, like now. Then they'll get one in the spring. Then they'll get one once the maize is out. So hopefully by the time they go back into new grass, I'll only do one year of maize in there with direct drilled maize because it keeps it nice and sort of smooth. And then just direct drill a perennial in after that. That's my plan anyway going forward. Hopefully it works. It sounds good in, in theory, but hopefully it makes sense too. I will talk about the turnips I did sort of float that idea but I will talk about it another time because there is a little bit of logic or a few things I'm sort of considering there as well but yeah I'll do that in another video. I hope you enjoyed this one guys. I am going to go and roll that last paddock now and sort of get it done. I was looking at it today thinking oh, I might just leave it but now I'm going to go and do it and then that tidies it up especially when I drive past it I'm going to think it looks good. But I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up like always and apart from that see you next time.